the love. And that person is like one who is climbing up the sky. To have a man for him is so heavy. Although it is not possible for any child and other to even attempt or have a thought to ascend, walk up, climb up the skies, for him it will be easier to do that than to accommodate faith. Whoever will try to climb up the sky. Allah did not bless anyone with wings. There's only someone who is as stupid as Pharaoh. But think of it, remember, when he told his people, go and get me a ladder so that I could climb up and I could prove Moses to be a big liar. People who are like Pharaoh will think about it. My respected brothers and sisters, when Allah really wants to give a person guidance, He makes Islam very easy for that person to follow. Whatever He hears about the command of Allah, do this, do that, His heart welcomes that. He does it and He finds peace and joy in doing so. He is not the kind who will say, I don't see anything wrong with that. What Allah prohibits? There are people who will hear about prohibitions, but I don't see anything wrong with that. You don't see anything wrong with that because Allah has made your heart narrow. Not full, but it is a bit narrow. It happens people who are disciples of Kalima, that is those who do not accept the faith wholeheartedly and completely. Don't forget the command is Ultralofisimini Kafa. Enter into the flow of Islam completely. Allah does not accept that half, halfway view. They don't accept some and reject some. Allah wants that we enter into the fold of Islam completely. When the Prophet was asked by the companions about Sharaf al-Sadr, what is the opening up of the heart of a person? That is when the Prophet Muhammad repeats in the Quran said, Nurun a light, Yaqari for me the heart, which Allah puts into the heart of a believer. Allah puts that light into a believer, through which the heart is ready to perceive, to understand and to accept truth. And this is important. When we listen to a verse of the Quran, a hadith, a message. It can be from anyone. What was the sunnah of the companions, brother and To listen to it as if they had never heard that before. Yet they were so learned, they were so educated. They felt, even though they were know that they wrote it, they narrated perhaps hearing that from somebody else's mouth could bring such light and guidance that never came before. It is not like bowing your head, I heard that already. That is not the sunna of listening to a message. And there are many people, including learned ones, who are laughing at this effect. Even though they are kept on stages, when they are put there as a lovely background to tell the members of the audience, listen attentively, I am here with you. They advocate negative things. By talking one to the other, someone will get up and go and come back after some time. Someone again will show, and I can tell you what I told you what I'm correct. That's not good manners. 
the light that comes. Remember, Allah puts it there. Open up the heart. A message you get from a little child, from one who, in your opinion, might be a vagrant, may never come to you sometimes from even a lower person. All of that, guidance comes in very different ways. Allah puts a light in your heart, ready to accept. When you listen to a message, don't look at the one who is delivering. Look at the contents. Listen to understand. Listen to learn. You may have no intellect, but look for the guidance. Do not strive to analyze, if not the message, to analyze the person who is delivering. That's a sign that Allah has put in your heart. It's not right. And the Prophet wanted to be himself explain that is the opening up of the heart when Allah puts a light in the heart that the heart will be ready to understand and to accept truth. It is not because it, it is not for one to listen to find fault. The Quran is the Quran. Will you honor one making a presentation because that's your favorite? He may not be your favorite, she may not be your favorite. But the thing is, is not the person speaking hadith in verse of the Quran. That is where sincerity comes in. We are not worshipping individuals. We honor the Quran. When the Quran is being recited, you listen attentively, you listen to understand. And back in school, don't forget school days, they are very precious. If you do not understand something, there are recess periods when you go to serve inside, learn something, and I want some clarification. Who do you go to? The teacher who said something, and you did not understand. You don't go elsewhere. Otherwise, it is in the category of Assad. Corruption, the Quran also discourages and condemns any form of corruption. Beg Allah to open your heart genuinely to what is not. When a light is put in a room in a strategic position, it lights up everything in the room. It doesn't light up some things and leave some things in the dark. When someone's heart Open to accept guidance. Allah comes with that line. Such peace and tranquility in the heart. He does ibadah. He is being rewarded. And mashallah, he enjoys every bit of it. You know what that is? When you are engaged in ibadah of whatever form, you don't do it, see it to be a burden. While you do it, you enjoy it to the fullest. You stand up in salah, you know, tie your hands with the beer, the prima, and you enjoy it from the beginning to the end. Whatever. Even you might be engaged in your daily chores, even the housewives at home. They are working hours. And because of that light in the heart which Allah has put, they treat it like Ibadah because they are led and inspired to do it for the purpose of taking care of the husband's property, looking after him when he's out, earning his daily bread. They have been rewarded. Whatever you are doing, one who is doing carpentry, while he does his work, as long as his heart is open up to Islam, he remembers Prophet Yahya was a builder, was a carpenter joint. What is so in? You remember Prophet Idris Salam, he used the soul. And each time he would tread the needle, he says, Subhanallah. Why can't one do that? 
each time, subhanAllah, at the end of the day, we have said that no one would have heard a better day to have heard you. You are planted in your garden, you are cultivated with sharp sadr, with your heart being open up to guidance. And that light in your heart, as you plant, you remember you call. When Allah is talking to you, I have seen where Allah has spoken to the gardeners and cultivators. So far, I did not see where Allah has addressed the lawyers, doctors, and engineers. But when he said the Quran, Aqaraaitun ma ta'kudun, do you see that which you cultivate? Are you the growers or we the growers? Who is he talking to? The people who go to the fields and plant. That you enjoy, whatever you do, do not underestimate that peace which comes from Allah. When Allah puts that, Light in your heart, you become the most peaceful human being with that light. Wherever you go, you are able to give peace to those in your company. It's something which is considered to be a very special lesson. In Surah Kuturat to the great, It's about what will happen to me in the hereafter. 
It's about being careful to the outcomes. You look forward to be saved from the other names. And the main worries of the day of judgment for you is about getting ready for death. That is a sign that Allah has opened the heart. He has placed that very special light. That is why we are advised to pray, Allahumma shrak. Allahumma shrak sukura al Islam. Oh Allah, you open for us our hearts. You place that light into our hearts. That we make preparations not only for the world, but we make preparations for both the world and also the hereafter. Mashallah, the companions for the Rawanto. They live in the time of Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they were blessed with Sharaq al-Sallam. That light which Allah had placed in their heart, that special guidance. Some of them were very needy. They did not have much to live in. They were so tirelessly to attain the highest grades in paradise. If you know what was great, by doing so, they did everything to make their brothers comfortable. And that's something noteworthy. They were not selfish. It was not about pushing down one on the right and one on the left to attain your goal. They worked for the hereafter while they showed limitless love to one another. I'm sure you will remember there were various points. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad, he gave one Sahaba. He received as a gift the head of a goat. Someone said a goat head. On receiving that, he thought of another companion who might be more needy than he was. You know what he did? He sent that lovely, in a lovely package, he sent it to that person. When that second person received the goat head, if he thought of another companion who might be more in need, genuinely accepted, although he would have loved it, the third one sent him to the fourth, and the fourth, and the fifth. The fifth to the sixth, you know what happened? It reached right back to the place where it was dispatched first. That was the love and the concern they had for one another. They made the greatest preparation for the hereafter. But what was remarkable, in so doing, they cared for one another. When one made entry into the many house of Allah, they would hold on to the tip of their sword for fear that they would scratch the skin of another person. That was the love they had for one another. The stories of limitless when we come to that topic. But after the passing away of the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the distance increased, we find the doubts and struggles and anything possible that can damage the faith and destroy love and unity, they started finding room for infiltration. And that is what started all the dogmatic do you know we have come upon a time when we have so many places of learning? You know what is unfortunate? No one cares to listen to the ideas of another. Each one thinks he has learned enough. No one wants to take advice or listen to the opinion. Islam does not teach that. With all the knowledge that the companions Brother had, they sat in Shura. If one person gave an opinion, the others did not bring up. They honored that. Of course, the decision will be made by one and appeal. And if one was not asked his opinion, he was the happiest person. For fear that he will give his opinion and something not good will be the outcome of that. That was the companion's body of 
how different are we to be? So many differences. Everything for some people has become a problem. And that's the absence of the light in the heart which comes from Allah. When Allah puts that light in the heart of the believer, he becomes so peaceful. His heart is so filled with sukoon. Nothing remains a problem for you. He becomes so humble. He becomes so tolerant in times of trials and tribulation. He does not see himself to be personal quality to you. Everyone else matters to him. He is last. And that's an important thing in any human being, a believer. That's the quality of the believer. To think of yourself as being pushed and I'm nothing instead of others. Make him others. Happy. It's essential. So, my brothers and sisters, a sign of that, shall be subtle. A person on receiving that light from above, he actually is being characterized as having some qualities of Allah the Some qualities. Loving, caring, compassionate, merciful, one of the main attributes of Allah. Desiring to be merciful and to become comforter. Wherever you go, wherever you go, in a small gathering, in a large gathering, your concern is let me see how much comfort I can give to those around me. Be it that you are in a family within the walls of your home. And that's the sign of the true believer. Not where you go, you are looking to see how much comfort people can give to you the other way around. Start at home, wherever you are. You want to give comfort to all. And you do it not looking for compliments. See it as your duty to make all those members of your family, those who live with you, guys like you, to make them as comfortable. You make them comfortable. Wherever you go, you are a vehicle, you are a passenger, you make others comfortable. That's the sign of the true believer. And as I am, once when the Janazo was last in the prophet of God, he gives us, is that the story of me or the story of him? Is that one who has left and cast aside all the trials and the problems of the world and gone to rest? Or is it one who as he died, everyone got comfort and relief from him? We must be very careful to be of the first category and not to be of the second. Live our lives. Show them our responsibility our commitments to one and all, as difficult as it is to be. That when you die, we will go to rest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and open our hearts and fill that our heart with that special light. Open our hearts to Islam. Let us be believers. Let us work for the hereafter and in so doing. Let us give comfort to one another. Do nothing that will create a shout and problems in a Jamaat, in the Muslim community. That is something that devours our good actions as fire devours wood. Allah knows and what we do. He knows what we think. It's all about working together to achieve the high grades and status in paradise. Allahumma shrak sudur and al Islam. Oh Allah, we open our hearts towards Islam. And may Islam be a very humble, comforting service. Barakallahu.